Hey there, this is an upfront disclaimer for this video. These are ideas that I've come up for my own desires, for my own build and the mechanics that I like to do. You can and should mold these to your own likes or make up your own entirely based on the sort of concepts that I've talked about in this video. Do not do these builds if they involve league mechanics that you do not like. Don't force yourself to do a league mechanic that you don't like because someone else told you to. Thank you. Hey there, this is a video about the various atlas trees that I've created in preparation for the 325 league. Please keep in mind these are biased towards the mechanics that I like to do as well as the mechanics that I think my build can do. Uh, so as such, if you have a very different build from me or you have very different preferences from me, you may not find this video very useful for you. Um, going into the context version of this document, um, the name of the game is Hydro Lava. As usual, you're going to make more currency and progress your outlets faster if you just stay out of your hideout as much as possible. And the currency exchange market helps uh, do this quite a bit, where you can liquidate the outputs of your league mechanics automatically using the currency exchange market rather than having to list them and then trade people and potentially leave your maps to do so. So you'll see that I have these categorized into, in, into different bits based on how I feel the currency exchange market interact with them compared to their like previous state. Um, so at the top here, I'm gonna quickly go through them. I'm not gonna explain them too, too much. If you want the details, you can either pause to view the subtext here, or you can go view the document. They'll be linked in the description. Uh, so for the good tier, the things that I benefit a lot because it was kind of annoying to either sell them in small quantities or just in general. Uh, one is harvest for life force. Essences for essence, obviously. Uh, blight for the oils, particularly lower tier oils. Um, ultimatum catalysts, these, especially the bad ones, were a bit annoying to sell, especially in the early game. This, these will become more relevant towards the end of day two to the like, start of day three onwards, so feel free to not go into this early, especially if your build can't handle it. Uh, scarabs, in general, if you don't take Unwavering Vision like I do, um, these can be very easy to sell now, whereas they were previously quite annoying. Um, all three of the end game like Atlas uh, systems, so Exarch, Eater, and Mavim. Exarch, Eater, relatively obvious. You can liquidate their Ickers and Emmers as well as their Bubblegum currency. Uh, Maven has the Maven Rip Fragments as well as the new Maven Chisels that all can be liquidated instantly. And then moving into the mid tier, we have Breach, Legion, Simulacrum, and even Harbinger down here all have the, the same issue of like, there's a long delay for the period where you would sell their items. So the introduction of the currency exchange doesn't benefit you that much because you didn't do that many trades to begin with with these mechanics. Um, as for the mechanics that don't benefit at all, Beast Jerry, cancel Beast in the Market, Harbinger, I just mentioned that, uh, Abyss, same reason as Beast Jerry, June, Basically the same reason as those two, although most people say don't take June for profit, they take it for like XP and filling other crafting table, just like I do. And then lastly, Expedition, can't sell logbooks on the currency exchange market. Um, and ROG is heavily devalued by the presence of the new vendor in the teasers where they it just kind of shits out really high, good uniques. And yeah, I've skipped a few because they don't really aren't super relevant um, to like league specific output. It's like they don't have like special things like that. Um, yeah, name of the game. Don't sit in your hideout, abuse the currency exchange. Now I'm gonna go into the basis of the first tree. This is what I consider the mapping nodes uh, of the first tree. So I'm gonna open up the third link here, uh, but there is different nodes for progression here. So I'll just open all of them so we can uh, see. Oh, the Atlas progress. Don't mind the flashbangs if it opens the links. But um, so at the start of the league, what I plan to do is gun up straight through the middle, lean towards the side that gives you Kirak missions on completion. These are extremely good for Atlas completion in the mid game. Uh, as well as you go up, this node is pretty much useless, but you don't want, it doesn't matter, you want the Kirak missions anyway. You go all the way up. You tag the additional Kirak mission on completion. If you want, you can tag this node now for the 10% chance for one point here, as well as the 5% chance for the map boss to drop the connected map. This is a very good node to grab right now. 
and then you basically make your way up the sides all the way up here to unwavering vision this is this is a big node for early atlas progression because it gives you 20 atlas points and we currently only have 26 so we basically gain twice as many atlas points as we currently have uh, when we hit that we're going to spend it on a lot of like map adjacent nodes so this is something that i picked up from a few content creators uh last league um where previously you would take uh i don't remember the name of the node but the node that would give you like smalls grant double but you wouldn't be able to use notables and you would grab a bunch of these so that you got like a hundred percent chance for a monster to drop a connected map um i don't recall you being able to do that anymore but you still get a lot of percent and the goal is just to get the map to drop in the first place um so you're going to notice that in the next tree i have pretty much all of the adjacent map nodes uh at this point you can see that all the nodes other than ones that are like behind several other nodes and annoying to get to or like scarab nodes like scarab nodes are pretty much useless so we want to avoid them as much as possible while we have unwavering vision but you'll see that i have all of the ones that are easily accessible for adjacent uh connected map and then i've also picked up the uh the additional shaping nodes here uh, that i didn't have previously just to like kind of round off the percent chance to drop a tier higher uh, you can also grab these ones up here i don't have them in the tree but they're also very good to get because they're just right next to the node on the top it's also worth noting i didn't mention it but this node right here is also very 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 good is basically the equivalent of three of these small nodes where you get six percent chance to get a cure mission on completion so from this you get i believe 14 percent chance of getting a cure mission so roughly one in every six seven maps you'll get a cure mission which adds up very very quickly uh, as you progress through the atlas and you'll see in this tree if we go to the side here we can see that you have a 60 percent chance for a monster in our map to drop a connected map which will help our map sustain quite substantially we have the additional five percent chance for the map boss to drop another map which i think it has a base value of that anyway 14 percent chance to get a kirak mission very good for sustaining and then just a bunch of various other things we have the chance to drop one tier higher is at 70 percent you could get if you take these nodes it goes up to 85 percent um so i'm not looking at that for now and then there's just a bunch of other mods associated with primarily the shaping nodes so in this document you'll probably see this document grow as this video goes on because i'm going to be adding to it after i do certain sections and then add more builds to it but as you can see here currently i have three and we're gonna go through each of them of what each tree is for and like what you might want to take it and what build you might need to do to be able to do it um, so these, all of the nodes here is still under the first tree. So the, so you'll see if we go into any of these, even the ones that are fully completed at 111 nodes, you'll see that it's still taking all of these adjacent map nodes. That is because at this point, as long as we're still on the first tree, we have not completed the, the majority of our Atlas progression and we will stay on this first tree trying to drop as many maps as possible while still making currency until we get probably most of our maps. I'd imagine probably like at least a hundred of our Atlas completions so like maybe a little bit less because there's a lot of unique maps, but yeah, just keep that in mind that we're still going to be using those nodes until you feel comfortable with your Atlas progression. When you feel like you've progressed enough, you can drop out of this first tree and uh, begin progressing with a second tree that drops the unwavering vision and allows you to get scarabs again and allows you to unallocate all of the, uh, pathing nodes that you don't want to waste points on at that point but um going into the first ones this was the first iteration that i did before i kind of thought about expedition i still like to think expedition's good i just think that uh it's less good than it was before it's still a very good like click and go sort of um thing and you can see that we have three trees here that i'll open them all so we can go through each of them and the progression so the difference from this one to the base mapping tree is we've taken most of the chance nodes that we care about but this one particularly goes into expedition blight and june so you can see that i've taken the primary the primary blight cluster for a chance up here i've taken the expedition cluster for chance down here and i've also taken the 
uh, big notable for a chance to get June, as well as this node over here, which will drop you a bunch more Veiled items. Uh, the other notable thing that has been taken on this tree is the large um, node, the large keystone for like the one single expedition bomb. I think this just simplifies and speeds up the expedition part of mapping quite substantially. I think it's very good for like keeping going in your maps, not like taking time, placing them one by one, making sure you're not hitting anything. You just plop it right in the middle. You check the debuffs, make sure you're not getting like immune to whatever you do and then you ignite it, you just kill them, and you move on. Moving on to the second tree, you'll see here, we focus on the two, on the blight side, we focus on taking the nodes that allow us to get um, easy blight. This is particularly important because we're also going to be taking the nodes for immune response and, and then Templar ingenuity. We don't actually know what this node does yet, but it sounds really good if your build is strong enough to be able to just make all different kinds of towers um, because of the third mod there. Salvage rewards are improved for each different tower type built during the encounter, which means you want to build different types of towers, which means you won't always be able to make the optimal like uh, stun ice sort of tower setup. Uh, the other things that got taken are the additional really good expedition nodes up here. And I believe that's it. Oh no, we also took safe houses. So now you'll start, whenever you hit June in your maps, you'll start getting a bunch of safe house uh, intelligence. And then every so often you'll get a safe house, which will give you a big spike of XP. This is very good for leveling this uh, safe house node. And then for the final tree, which is this one right here, uh, this one right here where we finish off, uh, mostly finish off expedition here. I believe that's the only big change to Expedition. <clears throat> and the other notable thing is we head over here on the left side over to Epidemiology. This entire circle is going to be really good. We have the, the Blighted Chests are lucky, and then you have the extra chance to get more chests and uh, the openable chests again. I think if you had to drop one of these points, it's probably the top one, although they're probably relatively close in actual profit generation, so just kind of pick whichever one you think is not good and this basically rounds out the starter of this tree at this point you have roughly 90 actual atlas completion which is approaching the point where you might want to swap off of this um and if you don't and you need want to stand up for longer you can start progressing towards exarch nodes like this and this you can get all of these nodes push you up to 125 which is 105 in the normal atlas and 105 normal atlas progression is generally pretty much most maps plus a few of the like bonus points from doing like the Exarch bosses and stuff like that. Next, I want to go into the second tree that I was talking about, which is the Blight June Ritual Ultimatum. This was something that I swapped to immediately after kind of thinking about Expedition and the downsides that uh, this league brings to Expedition in general. Uh, you'll see that it's like generally very similar. Uh, it still goes after Blight in June, but now it pivots off of the large investment in points that you'd need for Expedition, and puts them primarily into Ritual, and you have a little bit of Ultimatum because we're not quite strong enough to do full Ultimatum in the early game. So I don't think it's worth trying. Uh, but you'll see that at the first tree, this is the first tree immediately following the base nodes. You'll see that very similarly, we take the June nodes over here and here. We take the Blight node over here, but then we also take the Ritual and the Ultimatum Chance nodes. These are them. This is the main difference from the other tree. And then afterwards of that, we move into a few of the more core nodes, which you'll recognize from before. One of them is the two Blight nodes for the same reason as we mentioned prior. Uh, we also grab safe houses just like before, uh, but differently, we grab the reroll chance. Uh, this is going to be useful so that you can actually buy more items. Um, as long as we don't have guaranteed four rituals, there will be situations where you have three altars, but you still want to reroll because the rewards are bad, and you still want to be able to like defer stuff or buy new stuff. Um, until we get four altar and a bit more like map quant from red maps, I don't consider profitable prayers worth taking, personally. But uh, maybe you'll have a different opinion about that. Uh, but other than that, we take... This node here, 
because it lets you get to the catalyst notes quicker. You'll get them instead of on round four and eight, you'll get the catalyst on round three and seven, which means you can more easily cash out uh, if you feel like your character is not strong enough to do those later waves. Uh, most importantly, I didn't pick this one because the mod start a tier higher is really bad if you don't have the ability to consistently hit the end waves because it makes you tap out quicker because the mods start being able to hit tier 4 much sooner. And tier 4 mods are really dangerous. Uh, other than that, I believe that's all of the main changes here. Then we move into the third tree. Here you can see that I also put little notes here about what you're aiming to do. Uh, primary thing is we're pathing straight to epidemiology. And we're pathing towards the Exarch area, grabbing the small little node for ritual chance. And we're prepping for what comes after this, which if you reach this point and still need to put points into the tree, which you might at this point, uh, you can either grab all of the Exarch nodes if you've done uh, Exarch and Eater and are now just progressing Atlas progression. Uh, if you're still working on Atlas progression and Exarch and Eater and all of those uh, those skill points, uh, you can go all the way up here towards four rituals because guaranteed four rituals is very good for tribute as well as these nodes just being good in general. You get more tribute for your monsters and you get another 10% chance for a ritual out there. And moving on to the last section of trees before this video cuts and there's probably magically maybe one or two more. Maybe I don't add more, who knows? Um, but this one swaps out ultimatum for harvest because... I do have a little bit of skepticism that I'm going to be able to complete Harvest to the point where it's worth doing. Um, I'll have to see how powerful my character feels in the early game uh, before I start picking up the ultimatum nodes. But we'll see if we go into here. It's the same thing as you might remember from the previous ones, which is we primarily grab chance nodes here. So we grab ritual chance, we get harvest chance, we get betrayal chance. And we take this note over here for uh, more veiled items as well as the blight uh, the blight chance moving past that one nope sorry wrong. that's the wrong tree this one we grab safe houses as you would expect we grab the two blight things as you would expect for like safe blight and uh, the immune response plus the templar ingenuity we also grab the additional harvest nodes here. We also, while we're in the area, we grab these two small nodes here. Because these two nodes together give another 20% chance for harvest uh, to spawn in your maps. Which together with these nodes, I believe it's a 90% chance. Yeah, you can see it on the side here. Maps have a chance, 90% chance to contain a sacred grove, uh, which is really good. That means the majority of your maps will have it. Obviously, safe houses, I don't remember if I mentioned that, uh, but that's the main changes there. And then moving forward to the last one, epidemiology as usual, we go over here. You know that we don't go up towards Exarch, and instead we take down from safe houses towards crop rotation. Now I take purple because I'm personally expecting blue and yellow to be the most valuable. Um, one reason for that is that yellow is used for fizz reforge, which will be very useful for like kind of getting a early to mid game fizz weapon for all of the melee builds that are going to be played this league. It's going to be crazy. And then blue is good because it's reforged defense, which means uh, anyone playing a shield build, like I might potentially be playing special shield throw uh, or just like ES rolls, armor rolls, general on armor. Paint or uh, purple is good for. Uh, reforge life so if you don't want to give up the essence for reforge life i recommend blocking blue and keeping yellow i'm of the opinion that yellow will be the good one but you can also just keep an eye on the prices and block whichever one is the cheapest at the time when you get here uh, but yeah that is the main thing and if you want to do extra points here similarly to the other trees you move up towards exarch you can take the exarch nodes here and here you can take uh, the four altar as well. Um, but by this point, you're using the majority of your point and you're most likely done with your Atlas to the point where you want to drop uh, and Wavering Vision as well anyway. Hey, I don't even think it's been two seconds for you, but it's been a couple hours for me, but I've added uh, not one, not two, but four more, although 
most of them are just slight variations on the previous ones, like different permutations of the league mechanics. So I'm not going to make you struggle through another explanation of me doing these three, uh, because it's, it generally follows the same pattern of first tree is getting all of the immediate chance nodes plus like the June stuff. Uh, followed by the nodes that are either super integral to spitting out currency or are very nearby and point efficient to get. Followed by the stuff that might be a little bit further away or is like really good but further away and those things. Generally, that's just what you'll do. It's just different permutations. I've added this one that does Blight, June, Ultimatum, and Harvest, if you're capable of doing Ultimatum. Uh, I also began adding Delirium to it. I guess I'll showcase what I actually take of Delirium. I treat Delirium like just kind of like a side mechanic that just kind of shows up in the map and sometimes gives you a little bit of extra loot. And the only Delirium nodes I notably take are the Chance nodes here and the faster Delirium node here and also this little Chance node here. Uh, I do mention that if you don't want to do crop rotation in the ones that also have Harvest, you can also go up and grab these nodes if your build is capable of doing them. They both make uh, Delirium pretty substantially harder, but they're both pretty decent payouts. The right side a little bit less so than the potential of the left side if you roll the three additional rewards. Um, but aside from that, there's one other tree at the bottom, which I currently at this unholy hour of midnight PST, is my current plan for my own uh, Atlas Tree and League start. I've decided to stop spreading my points as thin as they were in the other trees, and I've begun going more into the couple mechanics that are invested into, which in this case are Blight and Harvest. June is still the exact same. It's just safe house, more veiled items, chance to spawn, but you'll notice that I have a bit more. Blight is about the same where it's just like the easy blight nodes, the fast blight nodes, this node, epidemiology, but harvest now has a few extra nodes. I'm now by default taking bountiful harvest, and I'm also going up towards the middle and taking heart of the grove, as well as these bits to have better, uh, just better crops in general, even though these, these nodes don't matter, but this node here with the 10% chance for the unchosen crop not to wilt, is pretty decent with crop rotation because it means that if you don't wilt your opposite crop, you get an extra iteration of crop rotation, which can end up being really uh, lucrative in the amount of life force you get. Now I want to talk a little bit about the second tree. These second trees to me are the like pre-scarab, post-atlas progression, like money-making sort of trees. I don't intend to buy scarabs with any of the atlas that I'm doing here, so that you'll notice that all of the trees in this section have as close to 100% natural spawn rate of these mechanics as possible using the respective spawn chance uh, nodes on the tree for those mechanics. So going into each of these, you'll notice that they are very similar. All of them have Blight because as of right now, I'm a relatively firm believer that Blight is going to be quite good, uh, just due to the reasons that I mentioned at the start of the video with like the prismatic oils, golden oils will basically only come from Blighted maps. And then obviously the double anointed necklaces from Blight Ravage maps as like big chase items if you land double good rolls. You don't have to run the Blighted maps, but there will be a lot of people running blighted maps because of that. That's why you see blight in all of them. And then the other two mechanics are basically some two of Ritual, Ultimatum, and Delirium. I'm most likely going to be going this first one just because I really like Ultimatum, and I'm also really interested in trying the new Ritual and seeing if I can hit any of like the new items. Uh, it's a little bit risky. They might actually end up being dog, and so might the King of the Mist, but... Who knows, this is the second tree. You can always respec to something else completely in the third tree if it doesn't work out. So moving into the first tree, which is Blight, Ritual, and Ultimatum. You notice this is a very left-hand left side heavy tree. At this point, 
we are effectively considered being done with atlas progression so we are not going super out of our way to get uh, the atlas uh, or not atlas but the map tier increase nodes you'll see that i basically abandoned the middle here because i don't really have any pathing to this section of the tree without intentionally having to go through three nodes just to reach it um, and that's all for a shaping node that is slightly less efficient than the other two shaping nodes you can see that the shaping node is 10 but these two are both 15. You can also see that I am using the, create the gateway to get this other one. So that I do have some tier upgrade. I believe it's about 60% or no, 50% between these five nodes. So it's still there. And also by this point, it's expected that you have both of your basic watcher's eyes, that your Exarch and your Eater watcher eyes. So at this point, you should still have the 100%, uh, but obviously more is better so that you have a chance to make the tier 14s roll up to tier 16s and so on. But regardless of that, going to the tree, you can see that now we path immediately left so that we can go straight into these blight nodes uh, because this is right next to the start anyway. We're going through and we want to go this way because we can naturally get these increased blight chance uh, smalls that otherwise, otherwise we'd have to intentionally path towards if we went like up the middle or through the alvin nodes uh, but we're grabbing the usual blight nodes that we already know about the two chance nodes we move up through here at this point we're also now grabbing the prove you're worthy node which is one of the risky ultimatum nodes if you don't think you can do this you can always path down here and make a node like or a path like this but i'm expecting because i'll be playing a gladiator that i'll be tanky enough to handle uh, this node that I'm going to be taking it in this part of the tree personally we path towards the left and up at the same time we go left so that we can grab the ritual and the ultimatum chance these two are required to hit a hundred percent chance for these to naturally spawn we also grab epidemi epidemiology like our leveling uh, progression trees we grab chance easy blight just like progression tree we're grabbing the reduced uh, cost of rerolls, but we're also now grabbing the bonus rerolls because we're now in higher tier maps, so map density should be higher. We also have the guaranteed four ritual node all the way up here, so we should have a, a relatively high amount of um, tribute every time we go into a ritual. Grabbing Exarch nodes, the standard Exarch nodes, make sure you still grab this ritual node, still required to hit 100%. Uh, some of the new nodes we're taking are also these new blight nodes up here. These are some of the notable changes from the progression trees that we're using with those saved points. Uh, this one is effectively the old chance to drop blighted map from epidemiology. It's been moved up to here and also buffed slightly because you can now get up to 100% increased chance of containing or more chance to contain blighted maps uh, in your blight chests, which is really nice. Um, and then you also get this buff that has a chance to convert normal maps into blight maps. Now, this depends on your own map sustain. If your map sustain is pretty weak, you probably don't want to try to abuse this buff. Because um, you might need your own actual maps. But like, if you're okay with maps and you're fine with your own maps being converted to blighted maps, and blighted maps are actually like retaining their value, this is a very powerful mode because it could just convert random maps in your map. We don't know the percentages quite yet. Um, I'm sure someone will figure it out after release, maybe math it out, or maybe we'll get data mined, who knows. But um, I expect that this Blight Reach buff will be pretty useful. It's, I don't know if it's worth like rushing to the Blight to do it first thing in the map, considering it only affects you after completing the Blight. I don't think that'll be worth it, but we'll find out, I suppose. And then the last Blight cluster here is Blight Spawn. Now... This used to be the crazy sought after and broken oil extractor node. Oil extractors have since been deleted, and this node has been replaced with Blight Spawn. Um, so, what's interesting about Blight Spawn for long term, uh, as well as right now, is that it basically turns one of your lanes into an absolute boss fest where it just spawns nothing but bosses, but when you defeat a boss, there's a chance to spawn a extra chest. Uh, I believe this will probably stack additively, so when you get 10 boss kills, it'll guarantee an extra chest. 
I, but it could also work where every time you kill a boss, you have a 10% chance to roll. So you technically, if you kill five bosses, you could get five extra chests. But I think it'll work like the former, where it'll just stack additively and then calculate after the fact. Um, but what's interesting about this note in particular is that there is a scarab. Um, I believe there's a new scarab that will force... Uh, there's only to be one lane. So, this is the Blighted Scarab in question that, uh, I believe this was teased somewhere. I don't know exactly where this information came from, but it's on the PoE wiki. It's called the Blight Scarab of Blight Heart, where effectively Blight encounters in an area only have one Blighted Chest. What I believe this means is that it will only have one lane, uh, similar to like toxic sewers having like a high chance of only having like two, sometimes one lane, which can help like make a ton of blight chests. Now the interaction that people are wondering about with this is that because this makes you only have one blight chest, does it only make you have one lane? Now if you only have one lane, this interacts with blight spawn where one guaranteed one lane of your blight encounter is guarded by only blight bosses. This means is if you run that, does that mean you only have one lane and that one lane now becomes the blight spawn lane, which means the only lane in your blight is only spawning bosses. But yeah, the question is, how are those things all gonna work together? How does the bonus chest that this thing spawns work with this because it technically says it only has one blighted chest so does it just add the reward to that chest because it does say the blighted chest grows larger and more rewarding the more enemies that you slay and you also have more waves of enemies it's all just an interesting uh combination that people are very interested in in regards to the uh new like blighted setup and the potential like loot explosion that that one chest could have if it's just a big, gigantic blight chest. And it's also lucky because epidemiology uh, guarantees that at least three of your chests are lucky, but if there's only one chest, then that chest is guaranteed to be lucky. And it also has a 20% chance to be opened again, which means you might just have an absolute loot explosion of blighted maps and that's kind of the the big question with blight and if it works it's gonna be absolutely crazy but yeah moving on to the next tree which swaps out ultimatum for delirium everything else in this tree will look familiar to you i'm still taking the same blight nodes the same ritual nodes but the difference is the ultimatum nodes that i was wearing uh, have been swapped out for the delirium nodes we take the chance the faster delirium, but now we also branch over to the slower delirium uh, with the extra dissipation because with all of the delirium mods, it can definitely be difficult to uh, beat the delirium in this like mid-game state that you'll be in at this point. I'm going on here to grab a compulsive order. You can also take delusions of persecution if you think you can kill the bosses in time. Because we path up topside now, we are also taking all of these percent chance to have a delirium mirror. And then we are also going all the way up here to grab plus one count on map completion. If you are not a fast build, you can get rid of this. If you don't think you can actually get to the end of the map uh, before the delirium ends, feel free to get rid of this. This is partially why we're also taking these nodes so that you can not guarantee, but make it much easier to satisfy that condition. And then moving on to the last tree, it is you're not going to find any surprises here. It is the same thing as the other trees we've just done, except this time, instead of the ritual nodes that we've had, we are just going to be running the uh, ultimatum nodes coming back. So the ultimatums that we had before. So this cluster here, the chance node here, and the chance, the plus 12% chance node down there. The other two sets are not particularly worth doing. You can go up here and grab like the currency nodes if you want more currencies. This is not actually that bad of an idea. Uh, but yeah, that sort of sums up what my current plans are for the second tree. I'm still waiting a little bit. There might be more information that comes out over the course of this week that sort of defines, maybe there's a recently asked question that gets added regarding some of these blight interactions that we've talked about. Um, but yeah, it's all, a lot of this, a lot of this is a 
super concerned. That's why there's several of them, just in case, like, for example, uh, my build is too weak and I don't want to try doing ultimatum. I might swap to delirium and I might do, you know, all that sort of stuff. Feel free to take these, tailor them to your needs. Uh, if you want, you can use the app that I've created for helping me plant my own trees. It's just poeatlasoverlay.com. You can just, it's basically just a, it's just a basic ass still image of the Atlas tree from Poe Planner. And I've done little like fucking paint overlay things. You can select from the side what league mechanics you want to highlight on the map. So for example, I was doing something like, or for the uh, earlier tree, I was doing like June, Harvest, Ritual, uh, Blight. You can see that it highlights on the map where these mechanics are. You know, maybe you want to get rid of these, go do with just those. And you can see like where on the map they are in proximity to each other. So you can see that like, there's a lot of June nodes right next to Harvest. And so maybe you do some, when you're doing, if you want to do Harvest, you do some June stuff too. And uh, yeah. Reminder, these are these are ideas. They are not exact guidelines. Please adjust them if there's a lane mechanic you don't like in them. Don't just follow them because they're what I want to do. These are the lead mechanics I like doing. These are the lead mechanics that I think my build can do. If you're playing a different build, if you're a different person, which you are, feel free to modify them as need be to your own preferences.